The Marvel Cinematic Universe is brimming with characters. Sometimes you only catch a glimpse of someone in the background or in a special guest appearance. Other characters are always stuck in sidekick mode, which is why we came up with a list of MCU characters who need to be plucked from the sidelines and given their own television show. Starring role, here we come. Before we begin, hop on over to that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things CBR. Come on, you know you want to. It'll be fun. All those years ago, you picked me. What did you say? I saw myself. Why no, did you push me away? Because I saw too much of myself. Hank Pym Hank Pym is a staple of Marvel, both in the comic books and the cinematic universe. So much of what Hank did as a scientist and superhero made significant impacts on the universe. Wouldn't it be interesting to get the stories of the early days? In the Ant-Man film, Michael Douglas leaves too many unanswered questions. It really leaves the audiences wanting more. A television show from the perspective of young Hank Pym would add layers of depth to the current universe. Young Hank would be able to overlap with several characters and provide insight into things audiences have only heard about. For example, we could see more of Hank's relationship with Howard Stark. How in the early days they worked on technology together and helped establish the era of superheroes. We would also get to dig into his relationship with his wife, Janet, and his daughter. That would blend nicely into the release of the Ant-Man and the Wasp film Marvel has slated as part of Phase 3. We would also be able to see a variation of Ant-Man in action. We all love Paul Rudd, but we know he isn't the original Ant-Man. How cool would it be to see the young Hank Pym trying to figure out the suit for himself the first time and how different he was from Scott Lang? Look, I really don't want to hurt you. I wouldn't stress about it. Oh! Black Widow Black Widow has been a staple of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the release of Iron Man 2. She's been an ensemble member of five films and will be a part of the Avengers Infinity War when it comes out in 2018. Natalia Alyanovna Natasha Romanoff is one of the best spies in the world and deadliest assassins. She has been affiliated with the KGB, Stark Industries, a member of S.H.I.E.L.D., and most recently, an Avenger. She does all this without the added benefit of being a super soldier like Captain America, an enhanced human like Scarlet Witch, or a technological genius like Tony Stark. The team would not have been as successful if not for Black Widow. Isn't it time we see what she's capable of on her own? A television show that focuses solely on this character would not only provide unbelievable material to the MCU, but it would also address the lack of female leads issue. Yes, Captain Marvel is getting her own film. However, Black Widow came first. Why can't she have her own show? Audiences know the character and her comic book backstory has numerous plot lines to pull from. Not to mention the abundance of crossover potential from the films and the current shows on television. While heroes like the Avengers protect the world from physical dangers, we sorcerers safeguard it against more mystical threats. Wong. Doctor Strange is a new addition to the MCU. With the introduction of the Sorcerer Supreme of the Earth and Mordo, audiences also met Wong. In the comic books, Wong is the sidekick and valet to Doctor Strange. He dedicated his life to the Ancient One and studying magic to protect Earth. He has a colorful history with many potential plotline opportunities. In more recent years, like in Doctor Strange number 2, Wong has been described as a chef, housekeeper, martial arts instructor, mystical guardian, and insatiable adventurer. With a list like that, there's endless potential for a television show. In addition, it was revealed that Wong has been living a secret life apart from the Sorcerer Supreme. A television show that follows this double life that then connects into the cinematic universe means fans can be exposed to more magical storylines. Much like the way Game of Thrones deals with mysticisms and otherworldly creatures, this television show could take its direction from them. Wong is played by Benedict Wong in the film. We would love to see him carry over to the small screen. He balances Wong's sense of loyalty and duty to the magical arts with humor. Watching him evolve over time would be a lot of fun. Beautiful. Beyond compare. The Collector. The Collector jumped into the Marvel Cinematic scene during a post credit sequence after Thor 2 The Dark World. Thor and Asgard need a safe place to hide the previous Aether. The Collector, whose real name is Tanelir Tavan, is asked to come and take away the Aether for safekeeping. He does so, and we do not see Tavan again until Guardians of the Galaxy. This time, his character has been upgraded to more than just a cameo. He is arranged to meet with Gamora and the squad to buy a different Infinity Stone off of them. It's during this sequence in the film that we get to see the full extent of Tavan's items. His collection is deep and filled with rare oddities and otherworldly relics. Imagine a television show where you can follow the history of these items and how they came into his possession. An eccentric character whose comic book origin has a lot of material to pull from, the storylines would never dry up. Up. Fun fact, did you know the Collector is the brother of the Grandmaster? Imagine that guest appearance. Honestly, 
This is not the life I imagined for myself. A walking, talking, crash test dummy. But when you're a six foot five, indestructible, green skinned woman, your career options are <sighs> limited. She-Hulk. Now, we know what you're saying. She-Hulk is not currently in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're gonna give an unknown character their own television show without introducing her to audiences another way first? Yes, that is exactly what we're saying. Right now, the only way we get to see Hulk is when he's a part of an ensemble cast. As Mark Ruffalo has said in interviews, fans will not be seeing a solo Hulk film anytime soon. We also can't keep shoving Hulk into other superheroes' films forever just to keep him going. But what if we had another solution? We could get She-Hulk and a side of Hulk as a result. The origin story could be the same as the comic books. Jennifer Walters is the cousin to Bruce Banner. She needed an emergency blood transfusion. He came to her aid and donated. He gave her more than just his blood. Bruce passed along the Hulk DNA to her and transformed her into She-Hulk. Doesn't that make for an awesome television show premise? Audiences would get a variation of Hulk with the added benefits of a female lead and a special guest cameo by the Hulk. She has numerous storylines to pull from and we think it could add a lot to the MCU. I don't work like that no more. Crossbones. Sometimes a minor character in a film franchise has the most potential to be the lead someplace else. Crossbones has been in two Marvel movies. He had a larger role in Captain America The Winter Soldier and a cameo of sorts in Captain America Civil War. Both films were from the perspective of Roger's relationship with Rumlow. They didn't really dive into the character's backstory previous to Winter Soldier. Yes, we know that Crossbones dies in the opening minutes of Captain America Civil War. That doesn't mean that we can't have a television show about him. Some of the most fascinating stories is not knowing how something ends but the journey on how they got there. We want to see a television show that chronicles the events leading up to the start of Winter Soldier. Brock Rumlow has a rich backstory. He was a Hydra agent who infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. He fought alongside Black Widow and Steve Rogers. We want to see him in his youth. What was his time at Hydra like? Audiences often only get to see the organization from the superhero's perspective who's fighting against them. Maybe it's time we see more about what it's like being an agent. Craglin. In the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, it may have been easy to overlook this character. It wasn't until Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 came out in early 2017 that Craglin emerged as a major player in the franchise. In the first film, he kind of tagged along on the adventure. In the second one, his expanded role opened a wealth of possibilities. Fun fact. Actor Sean Gunn, who plays Craglin Obfonteri in the films, is the brother of James Gunn. As you know, James Gunn is the writer and director of the franchise. Maybe that's why Sean got bumped up in Volume 2. Regardless of how Craglin got to be a crucial character to the Guardians and plot, we couldn't have realized his potential until this film came out. Now that we know what this Achiltarian can do, we want to see more of him. As first mate to Yondu on the Ravagers, we know this guy has probably seen some wild things. He has participated in some crazy schemes and adventures that would translate nicely to the small Small screen. The story could follow him on his early adventures leading up to joining Yondu. How did he get there? We could definitely see it as misadventures in space with the Guardians vibe. <laughs> see how you like my web. The Prowler. Fans of the comic book know that Donald Glover's character Aaron Davis, aka The Prowler, in Spider-Man Homecoming has a prominent role in the comic books. He does a lot more than give Peter Parker some information in a parking lot. Audiences may have picked up on the character talking about having a nephew. This is true and very important. Fun fact, in the comic books, Davis's nephew is Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man in an alternate universe. We don't yet know how the MCU is going to handle this. The Prowler's line makes us think that they have something in store for audiences, rather than it being a neat nod to the comic books. Wouldn't it be interesting to have a television show that somehow meshes together these different elements? The MCU Spider-Man universe somehow colliding with an alternate reality. We could have two Spider-Men. Donald Glover's character could be the linchpin that connects both worlds. We follow the adventures of this character trying to figure it all out. Then Marvel can deal with the rollout over a longer period and really flesh out the complexities of the situation. It could have huge impacts on the MCU and Davis is at the center. Count us in. We need to go. Vision. The Avengers member Vision is not your typical superhero. He didn't volunteer to be a part of an experiment like Captain America. He wasn't trained to be an assassin like Black Widow. Vision would not be your typical television character. 
which is why we'd love to see him have his own series. His character could provide a unique perspective that is currently lacking on the small screen. Most of the time, main characters are human and as such have specific types of reactions and thoughts. Vision, as an android, would use his outsider mentality and position to have new and exciting perceptions. Would the show be about Vision trying to become more human? What it's like to defend a planet against invaders when you're neither from here nor a human? Could we even have a romance plotline in the show? In the MCU, a relationship between Vision and Scarlet Witch has been hinted at, but never fully explored. In the comic books, Giant Sized Adventures number 4, the characters were married. Marvel can take the comic book history and extend the film relationship even further. There's a lot of untapped potential to be explored with this character, and we would love to see it happen as soon as possible. <laughs> what? You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Yondu. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 yet, then this entry might shock you. Also, we can't believe you haven't seen the film yet. Right after this entry ends, go watch it immediately. One of the most devastating losses to the Marvel Cinematic Universe was Yondu. He died saving Star-Lord and the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy's lives at the end of the film. He redeemed himself, and we can't help but love him even more. We miss Yondu very much, and his absence will be felt. It isn't every day the MCU kills off a major player, which is why we're providing proposing an adventure for Yondu in a television series. We got some backstory in Volume 2 about Yondu's other work with Ego. We would love to see on screen what those were. Could we also get a young Peter Quill and Yondu storyline going? Absolutely. Guardians of the Galaxy has established how strong that relationship was. We know that there's a lot to unpack there. There are so many potential avenues for storylines that we think the writers of Game of Thrones should consider this their next project, since they know how to establish large universes and balance multiple complex plot lines. New weekly show to binge once Thrones is over. Well, well, well. Quite the light show. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. What did you think about these characters getting their own show? Do you agree? Are there any you think should have been on the list? Let us know in the comments below. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out more awesome videos from our playlist. And if you liked our video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.